Scenes are the building blocks of your narrative. They are the sequences where we see the drama unfold on our screens and can be intimate, quiet exchanges between two people or gigantic, explosive, action-packed set pieces. However, how do you write a scene? There are many ways that you can approach the craft of creating a scene, but today we are going to look at how you are able to develop a scene and a wider narrative through conflict. As Robert McKee states in Story, nothing moves forward in a story except through conflict. So, how can we create conflict that drives scenes forward in interesting and organic ways? Firstly, you have to consider what is the conflict that your character faces within that moment? How do you represent it on screen in the actions that your character takes? And are these the best way to challenge your character within the narrative? We can showcase conflict and how our character resolves it within a scene in six ways. Reconstitution of world, or C, ferocity of antagonism, or push, physical exertion, or pull, complexity of plot, or find, increased stakes, or risk, and finally, proximity to want, or desire. Firstly, how is it that your character sees the world? The environment that they are in should feel like it is a hostile place to them, and they should have to confront something within it to fundamentally change an aspect of it. Secondly, the conflict that they face should be external to them, or at least represented externally. Something that they either are chasing or being chased by. Preferably, but not always, this should be the antagonist or the antagonism of the piece. It should require them to physically exert themselves in some way, or to push themselves out of what they would be comfortable experiencing. It should be painful for them to reach their goals within the scene and require all of their efforts, at least at this stage within the narrative. As the scene progresses, the conflict should be adding to the plot. Preferably, something that our character finds makes things more complicated for them. The stakes should be evident in the actions that our character takes within a scene. If there is no risk, then there is no jeopardy. Importantly, each of the actions that the character takes during the scene have to be increasingly risky as they continue to find the action that will take them closer towards their happily ever after. Finally, each of the actions has to bring them closer to the want that they are looking for within the narrative. The thing that they desire from the story. So, how do we build these conflicts into the scenes that we write? We can ensure that each of our scenes pass through five stages. Status quo. Conflict with pursuit. Conflict with realization. Conflict with internalization. And then finally, conflict with exhibition or resolution. Let's look at this breakdown using two different examples. One from the thriller film Crawl, and the other from the prestige TV drama Dopesick. Firstly, every scene must start with a status quo, a normality that the character we are following exists within at that moment. They currently see a world where there is a conflict that they face, which they have to overcome. In Crawl, championship swimmer Haley is trapped under the crawl space of her father's house. She must get her incapacitated father out of this environment as a hurricane bears down around them. With the scene from Dopesick, Purdue Pharma sales rep Billy comes to see Sam in rehab a place that he is only in because of the pills that Billy sold to him. It's evidently going to be a painful reunion between the two men. Our characters then have to take the first action within the scene where they move towards their want. Either the global one of the narrative, or a smaller one that they have within that moment. This is their pursuit. They are trying to pull their way towards their goal. Haley in Crawl is literally pulling her father on a top to the exit of the crawl space, a place she wants to leave more than anything something that requires an incredible amount of physical effort. Meanwhile, Billy wants to apologize to Sam, something which is difficult for him to do as it requires him to admit his shortcomings and the fact that he was blinded by the lies Purdue told him and addicted to the money that they gave him. However, this action doesn't get them what they want because there is something greater in their way than they first realized. Something is pushing back, which is usually the antagonism or the antagonist. As Haley comes close to the exit of the crawl space, she is suddenly confronted by a large alligator, or antagonist, that she must navigate her way around. 
she is pushed back to the place where she initially started the scene, all the while still trying to keep her dad safe. With Dope Sick, Billy understands that Sam is so gripped by his addiction that the apology that he has offered the doctor is pushed back, and it is clear that Sam simply wants the young man to source him some more Oxycontin. The antagonism of addiction once again rears its ugly head. Our characters then have to internalise that this action is not the thing that has brought them to what they desire, and they are going to have to find a new action which will be more complex. In Crawl, Haley internalises that escape from this crawl space is going to be much harder than she first thought, and is going to have to find another way out. Whereas Billy in Dopesick internalises that he is going to have to find another way to discover the forgiveness that he desires. After they have internalised this, they exhibit the conflict that they've had with the resolution that the next action that they are going to have to take will require more effort, and thus more risk. For Haley, she comes to an understanding that leaving the crawl space will require her to confront the alligator in front of her, an action that is going to be significantly more risky than simply leaving the space. With Billy, he understands that he is going to have to dedicate himself to uncovering a new way to put the wrongs he has done right. These actions will require him to take greater risks than simply saying sorry. As the scene ends, our characters now return to a new version of the status quo, where they will have to begin again with a new action, one that will build upon everything that has occurred in the scene before, and allow for new discoveries and conflicts to be injected into the narrative. However, the world has now changed irreversibly, as they have exhausted one set of actions and are moving closer towards their want. The distance that the character perceives they are to the thing that they desire at the beginning when compared to the end of a scene is a good way of judging the impact that your scene has had on your narrative momentum. The further forwards, or in some cases backwards, your character has moved in the direction of their want is a great way to gauge how dramatic a moment is that you have created within your story. So, what are the major points that we can take away when writing scenes when considering the conflict within them? Number one. Showcase the conflict of your scenes through your character's point of view, and have them explore this through several increasingly complicated stages. Number two, always make sure that there is something preventing your character from achieving the goal that they are set out to complete during the scene. This could usually be an antagonism or an antagonist. Number three, have it so that once your scene is concluded, that you are able to demonstrate that the actions that your character has performed within it have had an impact on the narrative trajectory of the story.